We'll start with Michael Lev, Arizona Daily Star. Aaron, um, whether it's the defensive line or the defense as a whole, what do you think is the key to minimizing or even eliminating some of those big runs that Colorado hit you with last week? Uh, you know, it's a combination of both. Uh, you know, we preach all year about, you know, being in your gap and doing your job. Um, and kudos to Colorado from the last week. You know, they had some great coaching maneuvers where they kind of saw some things that we weren't prepared for and exploited that pretty hard with those big runs you saw. I thought we did a pretty damn good job overall, but, you know, eliminating big plays is a key to a defense. When you give up, you know, six or seven plays that break for 60 yards, you know, you're, you're taking everything out of yourself and all the hard work you did in the other 100% of the plays, you know. Right. So given um, the recent games against ASU and also when you look at ASU stats this year, it seems like running the ball has been a big deal in the matchups against Arizona, a big part of their offense. Is that priority number one this week always. for you guys? Our mentality is always stop the run. Um, you know, it's the three factors of our football is stop the run, make them throw, make them throw it fast. When you do that, you create turnovers. Um, I thought we finally got our turnovers, you know, in the game last week. We were real excited about that. Got the guys kind of throwing some balls they didn't want to throw. Uh, we weren't able to capitalize, but I think going into ASU, if we can carry that same energy, um, same mentality that we had. We just got to shut down the big plays and not let them break for those huge runs that they had. Next question, Justin Spears, Arizona Daily Star. Um, as a, a Phoenix native, uh, what does this week mean to you? Everything. You know, this is – um. I hate to say it, but if we had to win one game this year, it would be this one. You know, it's the biggest one of the year, especially – you guys watching this? Uh, growing up, you know, this was always the – he said, she said in town, you know, this is the battle of the, battle of the bands for everybody. So we're excited, beyond belief. Just so thankful that we made it this far and um, thankful that Arizona State, you know, got healthy enough to meet us this late in the season. Uh, so just grateful for the opportunity to play each other and, you know, bring the Arizona football back together. Uh, from a player's perspective, do you guys almost approach this as, as a bowl game? Absolutely. I mean, um, you know, any rivalry game you play, anyone who's ever played in one, I mean, this is, this is bigger than some of the biggest games we'll play all year. I mean, this is recruiting talk. This is state talk for the whole year. It's bragging rights. So this is almost, you know, bigger than a bowl game in a lot of our eyes because this is, you know, almost everything. And uh, what's the most memorable Territorial Cup that you can think of? You know, um, I try to think back to high school and back in the day, but um, the one that really stands out to me was I wasn't even – I was at New Mexico a couple of years ago, I believe it was, when Arizona was up big and they were about to break it for one of their uh, – make it for that bull run, and Arizona State actually came back and took it from them. Um, so, you know, it's always just shows how, you know, he could be, uh, you know, a one-win team through the whole year and the other team could be undefeated. It comes down to this. It's whoever came to show up to play for the, the Territorial Cup, and that's what's so exciting about it. Next question, Rich Herrera, Wildcats Radio 1290. Um, good afternoon. A couple of things. Um, do you have any friends at Arizona State that play football? Anyone you know? Not anymore. Not anymore. Uh, anyone that I knew is, is long gone. You know, I'm the last of the Mohicans. You know, I'm a six-year guy. So, you know, I'm probably the last guy in my, my grading class or anywhere near that's still playing football. Will you hear from anybody that you know that's associated with the ASU program this week? Uh, just old fans, uh, you know, a bunch of friends from high school that went there. They're, all, they're talking crap, and they're having a good time with it. You know, that will always be the rivalry, and I'm glad I get to finally be a part of it and the other team. You know, you talked about wanting to, to come to Arizona originally before heading over to New Mexico. Um, just getting a chance to play in this game, mm -hmm. uh, is it something you dreamed about, something you thought about, ever pictured yourself being in it? Absolutely. I mean, um, you, you grow up in the state as a high school player in Arizona, and you go to the – Arizona camps, you go to the ASU camps and you compete every year. I mean, this is like, this is your number one team option. So, you know, this is the greatest thing a guy from Arizona could ask for, whether you're playing for your side of the team. And I know how exciting it is for in-state guys to be a part of. One last thing for you. You talked a little bit about uh, cutting down the big play, um, like we saw last week. But can you address uh, Arizona State and the challenges that they're going to throw at your defense uh, through the running game, through the passing game, everything? Yeah, you know, they, they come out of that strong 11 personnel and they've run really well. So I think um, absolutely you see what we've done in the past and exploiting that big play option, seeing what we did last week is probably going to be a target. But uh, you can't ignore that there's a downfield factor. Whenever someone has a good run game, you know, they switch to that play action like Arizona State does and really crease you. So it's just covering all your grounds and making sure that you're doing exactly what you pregame for and exactly what you plan for and don't ever take a playoff or get comfortable. Thank you so much. Good luck this weekend. Absolutely. Thank you, sir.
Next question, Michael Lev. Uh, growing up, your household, was it an ASU household or a U of A household? Um, so funny story about that. My dad was actually, so I was born and raised in Oregon until I was about six. We were big Oregon Ducks fans. But we lived about 25 minutes from ASU. And, you know, I've talked about before a little bit, you know, they were kind of more of the glamour and shine team, you know. Um, uh, Coach Todd back there was always, you know, a big recruiter in state. But um, I was always leaning towards U of A just because I had more of a recruiting presence with Coach Rodriguez back when he was there. Um, so growing up, that's kind of where my favoritism leaned, just because I got to come out here actually when I was a, a sophomore in high school and come out on a visit to the University of Arizona when they played Utah. So it was a big, uh, a big deal for me just to have that kind of reach out from a coach here. So I was always more of a U of A guy just because they kind of showed more in-state interest. At New Mexico, is New Mexico State the big rivalry game or is it somebody else? Yeah, it's uh, New Mexico versus New Mexico State is the big one. Okay, so you faced Roy Lopez's team then. Yeah, we played what, them. What were the records in head-to-head -head games with you guys? Uh, Do you know? Uh, I only got to play in one of the games while I was there. I was uh, injured the other two. So I'm technically undefeated against Roy, which is what my bragging rights are against him. But um, we were 2-1, and one, um, my team against his while I was there. Um, I think he was 2-2. Two and two. He played the year before that as well. Um, so it was always a great rivalry. Um, for the state of New Mexico, you know, which is a smaller state, it was like the biggest deal. You know, everybody came out and um, just did their bandwagon with everybody on top of it. So it was just great to see. And that kind of what I like to relay, you know, is how big these uh, in-state rivalry games are. You know, no matter where you go, it's – State versus university, which is the greatest part of the event. Sure. Um, so he got a sack the other day, and he did sort of an air guitar celebration thing. Is that something that you guys worked on? Did that surprise you? How did that all come about? That's his deal. He's always, um, you know, we talked about the off season what his sack dance was going to be, and he's always been the rock star. And I tried to run up and, you know, get in front of him, tried to jam out with him and get excited, but uh, it was so awesome to finally get that first sack. And he almost had that second one on the other one. He was beating himself up, while, you know, just slipped off, but. Uh, he's been waiting to play that air guitar for some time now, and it's just so great to see him finally get that and pull it out. So you said you're a sixth-year guy? Yeah. Can you kind of run me through the sequence here? I'm, I feel like I'm missing a year. Yeah, so I had a really um, weird college experience, I guess you would say. Uh, so out of high school, I signed with Weber State in Ogden, Utah, where I redshirted. Um, kind of didn't feel great there, so I bounced back and went to junior college at the Mesa Community College here in Arizona. I played there for one year and graduated and was able to go straight to the University of New Mexico. I played there two years and was supposed to finish last year, which was my fifth year, but I tore my ACL in the first game and was able to get a medical red shirt, which allowed me to come back here for another year. Okay, so is this it for you then, these next two weeks? You know, I was planning on that, um, and I've kind of – I've been given the option the coaches here offered me a spot to come back next year, um, which is something I've been considering pretty hard just because this year has been so – you know, terrible with COVID and being on and off. And we didn't really get to have the experience, you know. Um, you know, most guys talk about, you know, you get your years in, but I came to play Pac-12 football and I feel like I kind of missed out on the whole Pac-12 experience and just without the fans and the environment. Uh, so it's something I'm going to think about with this month off after we get done here and really consider. Hmm. How old are you? I'm 23. So I am okay. starting to take a, you know, I'm getting some gray hairs in here, so I got to be careful. And what, whenever football comes to an end, what are you planning to do with your, with your life? Uh, I got plans on plans. You know, I want to travel. I got, um, you know, I've been trying to plan out a big road trip. I want to go taste all the food in every state, you know, with me and some of my brothers. Uh, but my big plan is, you know, I just finished, I'll be finishing my master's degree in entrepreneurship here at the end of the month. And I, I really want to open my own business. Um, I've been trying to come up with a couple ideas. I've made a couple of business plans. It takes to some venture capitalists. Um, but with COVID and everything right now, it's kind of an uncertain time of what I'll actually end up doing with the job. Um, so I'm just very thankful I have the university right now and a place to be. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, sir. Next question, we'll go back to Jack, Justin Spears. So you said uh, you want to travel. Is there any particular place that you want to go to? And I um, – you know, uh, my parents have been on top of it too. My mom's a sweetheart, and she's been waiting to get out of the country. So she's been, you know, planning all these out-of-country out of places. She wants to go to Ireland, Japan, and go to Rome. And so I've been kind of jumping on that with her, getting excited about it. Um, but, you know, I, I've never been to the East Coast. You know, I've got a lot of football friends that told me Georgia and the South are just the football country of the world. So I got to go visit and see if it's all, actually all that, you know, check out Florida. So I want to go through the whole Sun Belt, make my way up to New York, just do a whole cross-country thing if I get the opportunity. And taste food in every state, you said? Everyone, you know, I'm going to try to map it out, see where the best meal's at. And, you know, I got to give it a try before 
you know, I finally end up settling down and see what real food's like. So I got to make sure I have a, a good variety. So are you a foodie then? Oh, extremely. You know, I'm a closet foodie though. You know, I don't get on Instagram and post too much, but I got pictures on my phone where I, if I have a good cheeseburger, you know, I'm taking a snapshot of it and I got to show my friends and they get tired of it, but it's like the coolest thing to me. I get, I get blown away. Is there a certain region that you really want to hit for food? Uh, the South, extremely. Um, I've got a lot of teammates that played in Georgia or Florida, and they're always talking about the food down there is just completely different with uh, Cajun in Louisiana, and they said Zachary's chicken down there is just apparently amazing. So I'd be, a, I'd be damned if I didn't give it a try and, you know, quit talking up in and out over Whataburger all the time. You know, i got to <laughs> really have my options squared away before I get cocky. So are, are you a cook or do you just like tasting the food? I'm a little bit of a cook, um, not anything fancy. You know, I grill. I'm a big meat guy just because I work out a lot. So I do a lot of salmon and steak and burgers and stuff like that. Um, but just food for me in general has always been a commodity and enjoyment. And hopefully one day I can put that to some good use. And I know you said, you know, the, you're thinking about coming back next year because of, of just how this year worked out. But what's kind of maybe keeping you from coming back? You know, I'm old. Um, as you get older, you know, um, you know, your friends start to do things, family's starting to move away, and you feel like you're kind of, you know, maybe you're doing this too long and you need to finally move on from it. But uh, the, the key for me is I love football so much, and every guy wants to play in the league after, and nothing's guaranteed, and even that's not promised. And I finally have an opportunity to play Pac-12 football at the university that I've been wanting to play my whole life, and I'm so thankful, and I feel like it'd be a shame if I didn't give myself, you know, every chance to play and really suck it all in before I move on. And uh, lastly, uh, with you growing up in Phoenix, I'm just curious, what was your overall perception of, of Tucson and, and the U of A growing up? You know, Tucson was always kind of that oddball. Um, you know, I grew up in Phoenix. And I only came down here for the one time when I finally got to go see a U of A football game. So I didn't really know much about it. And being in Phoenix, it was kind of like that, you know, almost like down south cowboy area that you didn't really hear about too much. So coming down here finally to play at the university and be stuck down here, it was really eye-opening just to see how great of a community, how great of a city it is. You know, one thing that's blown me away is just um, the people and the food and uh, the university itself has been just amazing. And it's really kind of a oasis out here in the desert. And uh, just mention food. What's the, the, the Tucson food that you like? Oh, man, I've had – I've been hitting a lot of spots. i got to be honest with you. It's been like my favorite pastime here. Um, my favorite one right now is Baja Cafe. I've been hitting that almost every other Saturday morning because it's just – if anyone gets the chance to hit that place, it's the best breakfast I've had there. Last question for Aaron will be Bailey O'Carroll. Bailey, you muted. Sorry, my unmute button never wants to work. I hate to deter the question from food because I'm also a big Baja Cafe fan, um, but I'm going to do it. So um, yesterday, Coach Sumlin said, he thought that you guys might be getting used to in, in kind of a weird way to pumped in crowd noise or fake crowd noise. Uh, would you agree with that? Um, you know, a little bit in the sense that it's just so weird when you come out to a, a stadium like our stadium and there's no one there and you kind of have the fake sound. So it's really just, especially for me who's played for the past five years and you're used to big stands and stuff. It's just really kind of a weird feeling that I don't think a lot of people get to see when watching our games on TV for us. It's just very different. Uh, and you hate to say get used to it, but um, I think it really, in our eyes, just makes us more excited for things to get back to normal and very hopeful to see people back out there again. But in the end, we're just glad to be out there playing football, I think. And how, how different will the lack of fans um, be for a game like Friday's? Like a game where that's kind of the epitome of having fans at a football game. You know, especially for an in-state game. It, uh, I mean, you would think about this week, you'd have your big tailgates and your big trash talk and everything going on. And, it's just dead quiet in the middle of winter, and it's just doesn't have the same feel at all. But um, for guys who play football and know what this is, and you come out and practice every day, uh, that doesn't change your mindset. It just kind of takes more of the spirit out of it. But the want to win and the want to play and the enjoyment still there, absolutely. Cool. Thank you. Cheers. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Appreciate you guys. Have a good one.
All right, questions for Michael Wiley, please raise your hand. Michael Lev. Hey there, Michael. How you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Um, you had the best game of your career against Colorado. Um, as you sit here a couple days later and reflect on it, what stands out to you the most? Uh, for me, it's just for that game, I think I could have did a lot better. You know, there's some things that I did good, but this isn't a time for me to just feel, feel satisfied. You know, there's a lot, th a lot of things that I can do better. You know, as a team, we can do a lot better. And so I'm not really taking this as a win for me, but, you know, it's opened my eyes. And now, uh, now I'm starting to feel comfortable playing, and that's a good thing for me. So, yeah. Sure. I was going to ask you next, but you sort of led into it. Like, when your head hit the pillow, um, you know, Saturday night, were you thinking more about the good plays that you made or kind of the near misses? Uh, pretty much the near misses. You know, I, I, uh, for, for the work that I put in, I kind of uh, – would expect uh, some good plays to happen for me. And so the things that I, that stuck in my head were like the bad plays, things that I can just do better at and get better at. And so, yeah. Sure. I mean, the, the one that was the most obvious one to see was the pass uh, down the sideline. What happened on that play? Uh, I don't want to make excuses for myself. Just next time I got to catch it. Sure. And then there was a, a run you had, um, going uh, into the, toward the south end zone where you almost scored a touchdown. It was really close. And I, feel, I think a few plays later, uh, the ball ended up getting intercepted. Did someone just get a piece of you on that play? Did you just lose your balance a little bit? Uh, yeah, he kind of got my ankle a little bit. And so it kind of ca caused me to trip at the end. So, yeah. So when you, when you look at those plays and maybe like, you know, a 30-yard run that you feel like could be a 50 or 60-yard run, what are the things that you can work on uh, in practice or in the off season where maybe those plays turn into touchdowns? Uh, just my acceleration and then just my balance, stuff like that. So I won't be able to uh, be taken down as easy. And then I can just, uh, with my speed, just separate from defenders in the secondary. So, yeah. So how do you work on your balance? Uh, just with off season stuff that me and my trainer do back home and stuff with Coach B. And uh, pretty much if I keep doing those things, I'll just get better at it. Thank you. Next question, Justin Spears. Michael, as an offensive guy, how deflating is it when you guys are unable to execute inside the red zone, especially on the goal line? Uh, it's, it's pretty deflating, you know. When you, it kind of takes a toll when you drive all the way down there. You can't really get uh, nothing out of it. And then, um, you know, in that game, uh, the defense were, were getting pretty good stops and stuff like that. It's, it kind of, uh, it, it's kind of in the back of your head, like we got to go score. Uh, defense is playing good right now. Stuff like that makes it kind of deflating. And the, this is your second year uh, in the rivalry. Um, how would you summarize it and how would you describe your experience in it? Uh, it's a lot of tradition, you know. I'm uh, Coach Cecil. Coach Cecil had a speech for us. Very interesting, but he pretty much got his point across and everything and stuff like that. It's just, like us versus ASU is a it's a big game, and just to just to see the history behind it is is amazing. But uh, this week we just gotta uh, look at them, look at them as a team that has uh, zero wins just like we do, and we just gotta. It's just a this game is just a battle of who can get the first uh, first W. Coach Sumlin said uh, Chuck Cecil talked about like. Back in the in the rivalry, people were like kidnapping fans or, or doing something. What what did you take away from Chuck's speech? Uh, it was just it was uh, surprising, but he he pretty much got his point across, you know. And uh, same thing, like I was just surprised when he said people got kidnapped and stuff like that. That just goes to show like how deep that rivalry is. Next question, Rich Herrera. Uh, good afternoon, Michael. A uh, couple things. Can we talk about the quarterback, Will Plummer? Give me your thoughts, second, almost two full games with him, uh, of what he's been like in the huddle and, and leading this team. Uh, he's been pretty calm. You know, he's just uh, young right now, but that's pretty much for anybody. You know, uh, versus UCLA, he, uh, it was, he was just kind of thrown out there. Very unfortunate that Grant went down the first play. And I, I think uh, comfortability-wise, he just handled himself pretty good. And so it's just 
right now he uh he's going to he's going to progress a lot better now you grew up in texas so there's a lot of rivalries down there texas texas a&m uh oklahoma texas playing in this arizona arizona state rivalry um what's the buzz around uh the team right now what are you guys talking about as far as just knowing that this is your rival just win pretty much win that's that's pretty much what we've been talking about we just got to get a w you know we don't uh we definitely want to be asu we don't want them to get a uh, win this year pretty much just win okay one last question for you can you talk a little bit about arizona state what you've seen on film and the challenges they're going to present to your offense uh i think they're a good team um, I think that we can just beat them with our offense, with the guys we have, and then the schemes that we put against them. You know, I think that we're the better team, but I think they're a good team too. Great. Thank you very much. Next question, Michael Lev. Um, one of the issues the offense has been having is third down, uh, especially the third and long situations. It seems like other teams are bringing a lot of pressure packages. Um, from your running back perspective in the backfield, what are you seeing in those situations? Uh, a little, just a little bit of miscommunication, but I think this week we got everything, uh, uh, packed down packed. And I think this would be perfect, uh, for 30 long situations, just overall in third down situations. Sure. And you referenced, you know, areas of your game where you can improve is run blocking. I'm sorry, is blitz pickup one of those areas? Uh, for sure. Always one of those areas. That's where you make your money at. Sure. And how, how can you improve when, when you watch the film of yourself, um, you know, what are the areas where you feel like you can get better in, the, in that specific part of the game? Uh, just technique, you know, making them uh, run, run the hump, as my coach would say, and uh, just getting there with speed, beating them with speed and punching them as, so I can make contact first. What, what does run the hump mean? Uh, basically wash them outside the uh, quarterback's pocket. Okay, so just get them, sort of steer them, to yeah. make it make for a longer kind of path to the quarterback. Yeah. That kind of thing. When you, um, when you walked on the field at um, Sun Devil Stadium last year for this game, what, what did it feel like? What was the atmosphere like? Uh, it was pretty surreal, you know, being a part of a rivalry that big at such a uh, young age is kind of just new for me, and I was just kind of soaking it all in pretty much. But it was a great experience. What, just, was, the biggest, what was the biggest rivalry that you followed or were a part of back in Houston? Uh, my high school rivalry. Uh, it was a pretty big rivalry. We played our, I think, uh, my senior year, we played in my first game of the season uh, at Energy Stadium, and we had a, a big, pretty big crowd there. So, yeah, it was, that was probably the biggest rivalry I've been a part of back in the What East. was the school that was your rival? Uh, St. Thomas. St. Thomas. Okay. Did yeah. you guys win that game? Yeah, we won. Yeah, you did. Okay. Um, what would it mean for this season, for this team, for this program, if you were to, to pull out a win on Friday? Uh, I think it would mean a lot, you know. I mean, it's it's unfortunate that we uh, are for right now, but if we can just finish out the season strong, uh, I think it would be good uh, for our team, especially sure. with beating ASU, so. Sure. Thank you. All right, thank you, Michael. All right, questions for Rourke, Fre Rourke Freeberg, please raise your hand. We'll start with Michael Lev. Yeah, I asked uh, Aaron Blackwell just about run defense, you know, kind of either minimizing or eliminating those big plays. Um, when you review the film, what are you seeing in those situations and what needs to be done to turn, you know, some of those 50 yard gains into maybe, you know, seven or eight yard gains? Uh, I think a lot of it is eye discipline and, and understanding assignment. You know, you go back and look at the film. We're having, you know, guys fitting wrong gaps, and I'm guilty of it myself. You know, there was a there's a handful of times where I'm throwing the blocker that I'm supposed to be in that gap, and I'm putting him in that gap instead of fitting that gap. So just, just little things like that that are, you know, opening up big holes. And, you know, I think there was a stat that 35 of Colorado's plays went for two yards or less. So, I mean, if, if you look at it, it was really only that, you know, four or five big, big play runs that, that resulted in a lot of those big gains. So, I think, you know, just understanding assignment and eye discipline will help, help go a long way in stopping big plays like that. Sure. Um, you lead the team with three and a half tackles for losses. You're among the team leaders uh, in tackles. You said um, after the USC game that you expected this 
type of performance of yourself, but is there any aspect of your play so far that has surprised even you? Uh, you know, that's a tough question because, you know, I don't want to go out and start bragging or anything, but I just feel like my, my ability to have an impact on this team, you know, make big plays, you know, I, I felt, you know, sitting on the bench for three years or really only playing special teams, it, it was going to be tough to, you know, step on right away and start making plays. Um, because really, I was always only focused on, on doing my job and ensuring that I'm, I'm in my right assignment. That way, I'm, I'm not letting big plays happen and stuff like that. Um, but at the same time, like I said in my interview at USC, I'm not surprised because I show up every day and I work hard and I, I make sure, like I said, I'm doing my job. And, you know, sometimes doing your job results in making big plays. Sure. So I'd say a lot of your best plays, you kind of come swooping in from the edge. Um, for the most part, is that a situation where you're reading the play or is that – what's called and you're supposed to to blitz or run into the backfield in those in those situations typically it's when i'm called on a blitz so um but but sometimes you know you just get a feel for the game uh, and your instincts kind of kick in and you know if you if you, you see a play like a screen or some sort of sweep or option and i got an opportunity to go make a play i'm, I'm definitely going to go pull the trigger but majority of the time I'm, I'm in my assignment doing my job and it just happens to be that the ball came my way and i made a play uh, on the, the jet sweep forced fumble situation against Colorado, which one was it? Was that uh, your assignment or is that your, your instincts? Yeah, that was my assignment. I, I'd initially gone inside, but then in game adjustment, I was told to fit outside of that, that number two receiver. So look at the play. It was almost like I was going inside and bounce outside. So I think it, it might've messed up that the, the guy who was on the sweep, cause he thought I was coming inside and then I bounced outside. So just put myself in position to make a play and, and, and made it happen. Next question, Justin Spears. Rourke, how did you get your name? <laughs> uh, well, I was uh, – obviously for my parents, they gave me that name. Uh, but Rourke meant Little Ruler in Irish. And I, I think my parents just like that. Uh, my family wanted to stick with R. My dad's name is Ryan. Uh, I'm Rourke. Then uh, I got my younger brother, Rogan, and then my youngest brother, Jack. So we kind of threw that one off. But uh, got Rourke from my, from my mom. And were you always called Rourke? growing up or was there a specific name for you? <laughs> I, had, I mean, not nicknames, but people would always mispronounce my name. Rorky, Roke, Rock, Rake. I mean, it, it, it goes on and on. I don't, I'm not sure how people continue to mess it up. I mean, you guys seem to always get it right. But uh, yeah, I've been called endless, endless names, but Rourke is, is how it's pronounced. So substitute teachers were always a problem. <laughs> oh, even my normal teachers were a problem, but <laughs> mostly substitutes. Yeah, I could never pronounce my name right. Uh, so you're a, you're a Phoenix guy. Um, wh what is uh, playing in a game, especially now that, you know, you're a big part of this defense, uh, what does this game mean to you? It means a lot. You know, that's my hometown. Uh, believe it or not, I actually – I grew up a Sun Devil household. My mom went there. Um, and then, you know, coming out of high school, I decided to come here. I thought this was a better fit for me academically and athletically. Um, but this game means a lot. You know, I, I look forward to this game every year, and especially now that I'm, I have a – you know, a critical role on defense and I can, you know, make some plays to help have an impact on this game. Um, I'm, I'm greatly looking forward to it. This is a game that I, I circle every year just because, you know, it, it means the most to me, the Territorial Cup. Not to discredit any other game, but, you know, it's the Arizona State-Arizona game for the Territorial Cup. So this game means a lot and I'm, I, I can't wait to get on the field Friday night. Next question, Rich Herrera. I have to follow up, Rourke, on, on your mom being a Sun Devil. Has she said anything to you this week? And what do you expect her to wear on Friday? Is she going to be wearing ASU gear or is she going to be wearing red, white, and blue? Uh, she doesn't care about Arizona State anymore. She's a, she's a full Wildcat, especially now that her boy's playing on, on Saturdays for the Wildcats. So for her, that was just an educational deal. But she's a, she's a full-blown Wildcat for sure. So there, there's, no, there's no talk there. She's just excited to watch me play on Friday. Do you have any former teammates that, that are Arizona State or any uh, friends that, that go there or play there? A uh, buddy of mine from high school, I'm, I'm not sure if he's at the team anymore, but Armand Reichel, he walked on there. Uh, Kyle Soley, I think he's their starting middle linebacker at ASU. Him and I grew up together, went to middle school together and, and played football together. So he's, he's a good friend of mine. His younger brother, Connor. Uh, I'm not sure who else is still on the team over there, but I know like Connor and Kyle are, are guys that I grew up with and played football with throughout my childhood. So. So obviously, being from Scottsdale, you understand the significance in the state. Uh, have you heard from anybody back home, any friends or, or people that you know that are maybe having uh, some, some thoughts for you this week? Sur surprisingly not. I'm still waiting for it. I think it's going to come once we get closer to kickoff. Usually I got somebody who always texts me and says something every year. But uh, so far, I haven't, I haven't heard anything yet. But I'm, I'm anticipating something coming probably like Thursday or Friday. So, Okay, a uh, couple things about the game. Uh, if you can just give me a little preview, what challenges does uh, ASU present uh, after you look at them on film to your defense? 
Uh, I think they got a lot of weapons, you know, some young guys that got in there. I think that uh, LV Bunkley Shelton and Johnny Wilson, two, two highly recruited guys that uh, I'm sure they're going to want to get the ball to. They got a good run attack, uh, a lot of shifts and motions and stuff like that. So, so that's why I go back to eye discipline and, and understanding assignment because they're going to do a lot on offense that is going to try and mess with our, our eye progression. And we can't let that, let that phase us. So, um, but yeah, I think they got some weapons on offense that we're going to have to slow down, but I think it goes back to the run game. I think if we can stop the run game that uh, we'll have success against this, this offense. Coach, someone talked about the defense and the work that you guys have been putting in, uh, looking for takeaways. You had three turnovers that went your way in this game. Can you talk about the, the work you guys have put in in practice and how you plan on building on it in the next two games? Uh, I think it's all about at the end of the day when, when that ball comes your way, you got to make a play. That's why the coaches put you on the field. They trust you and they think that, you know, you're the best shot to make a play on the ball. So I think, you know, in practice, we always emphasize on getting turnovers, especially when we go to seven on seven and in our scouting periods. You know, the emphasis is do your job, get to the ball and make a play. So I think, you know, Anthony Pandy had, a, had an amazing game with those two interceptions that came up huge for us. So I think, you know, we look, look at stuff like that and say, hey, we got three turnovers that put us in a position to, you know, get points and win the football game. We got to capitalize on that and, you know, emphasize that moving forward against Arizona State. Great. Thank you so much. Good luck Friday. Thank you. Next question, Michael Lev. What did you make of um, Coach Cecil's speech the other night? <laughs> Can't necessarily get into the details of that, but it fired me up. You know, he, he's a – He's a truly passionate guy. I honestly like to think think of myself kind of as him, as a as a newly reformed Chuck Cecil, if that makes sense. You know, he was a walk on back in the day who made a, a legacy for himself here. So, you know, I've always kind of looked up to him and gone to him for advice. I talked to him, you know, every other day here and there just about football. And especially this week, you know, I told him like Chuck, this is our game because he gets fired up every every year for this. So you can you can definitely hear it in his voice, the passion he has. And um, you know, I, I know he's looking forward to getting out there Friday night, even though he's not playing, I know he's he's highly anticipating this game as well. When you stepped onto the field uh, in the, in this game, I don't know if you played two years ago or last year, but what was the what was the atmosphere like? How would you describe what it felt like out there? Yeah, I played the last two years. It's really only on special teams, but uh, I mean, it's it's like nothing else, man. I tell you, especially two years ago, we were I think a sold out crowd almost, and you know, playing that, that was really my first time in a, in a truly filled stadium. Um, it, the atmosphere was unbelievable, especially for the Arizona State game. You can just feel the intensity. You know, you get on that field and it's loud, and you know that it's a true battle. The Territorial Cup every year is a game that, you know, it's, it's a true toss-up no matter what the record is or who's better than who. It's always, it's, I feel like it's always a toss-up. And then, you know, last year, uh, same deal, you know, playing in Tempe. I, I honestly love going into opposing, opposing stadiums. I think, it's, I think it's one of the coolest experiences in college football, you know, being a guy that's from Arizona and seeing all those different places. But, you know, Tempe is always a, a place I love playing at just because of the atmosphere. So uh, it's, a, it's a great environment. The intensity is always there. And like I said, I'm looking forward to, to this Friday. Even though there's no fans, I know that intensity is still going to be there. Sure, sure. What would it mean for this season, this program, this team to win the game on Friday? Uh, I honestly think it, it, would, it would mean a lot, especially to this community of Tucson, you know, just the state of Arizona. You know, it's, it's been a really weird year, you know, no fans. And, you know, our season hasn't really gone our way. You know, we're on four right now. But I think, you know, if we can get a win in the Territorial Cup, that can, that can set all things straight. Because, you know, at the end of the day, that's one of the biggest games of the year, if not the biggest game of the year on the schedule. So I think uh, if we can get a win Saturday, that'll, that'll help, you know, start moving this program in the right direction. Sure. You um, referred to yourself as a senior, I believe, when we talked to you. Um, after the USC game, you are academically a senior, but you're a redshirt junior. Right. If you come back next year, you could even play two more years um, yeah. if you wanted to. Have you thought about the future at all as far as playing and so forth? Yeah, I mean, I, I'd love to play. Honestly, my plan is to go to, is to, go to grad school and work to get a, a master's degree. So uh, I, I'd love to. I don't want to just throw those two years away. You know, at the end of the day, my, my goal is to play football professionally. And, you know, I don't think – I don't think I can get there unless I play those two years. So I'm definitely looking forward to, to playing two more years regardless. So, Sure. And Aaron Blackwell said that they, that they basically invited him back or told him he could come back. Have you had those kind of conversations with, with Coach Sumlin or anyone? I haven't necessarily had a conversation, but I think they talked about, you know, they're doing a thing on senior night uh, for the seniors, and I didn't, I didn't get that conversation. So I guess my assumption is that, you know, I'm, I'm planning to come back next year and, you know, keep playing for the Wildcats. So. I'm excited for the future, uh, regardless of what, what's in store. So I can't wait. So you seem to have positioned yourself to earn a scholarship, but, you know, you, you can't really go out and, like, ask them to, to give you one. Like, how does that work? How much do you think about that sort of thing? Uh, I'd be lying if I said I didn't think about it. But at the end of the day, you know, my responsibility is showing up, working hard, and, and doing my job. And those aren't the things I can really control. I can just control my attitude, my effort, my energy, you know, taking care of business in the classroom. You know, that's part of the scholarship as well as having good grades and being able to you know, stay eligible. But uh, like I said, that's not really in my control. That's something you'll have to talk to the coaches about. But uh, I'm just focused on getting a W against Arizona State on Friday. 
Sure, and one last thing for you. You mentioned the, the run game being the key. Aaron Blackwell said going into every game, that's like sort of the number one goal for the defense. Arizona State has a 230-pound freshman back, a chip train him. What's the key to, to you know, containing a, a big, uh, strong back like that? Got to be physical. You can't, you can't let size, you know, you know, shy you away. I think, you know, you look at USC, I think they had a couple of backs that were, you know, 220 plus. And, you know, I don't think anybody shied away from, from either one of those backs. And not to discredit them, good running backs, but I just think, you know, if we can carry that over to this game, uh, be physical and, you know, wrap up, we, we can't miss tackles. That's, that's obviously a big thing that we've, we've struggled with. But well, I think when we get half the ball and, you know, be physical, I think we'll be just fine. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. All right. Thank you, everybody. That's all we have for today.